Hi, Scottish Mudlarkin here with Nicole and Craig. Today we've come along to London Lynx. London Lynx is a town that first expanded in the 19th century to accommodate tourism from Lower Largo. So as all these Victorian tourists were coming into this area in Fife that we've spoken about before, it was starting to fill up all the smaller villages, something had to be done. So people started building guest houses in this area called London Lynx. We'll maybe say a wee bit more about that later, but for now, we're going to see what we can find on this beach. Okay, so we're just about at the tide line then. And I think this is where we're going to have most luck today. Who knows, maybe we'll find another bead. Oh, maybe nice. we'll find two. Oh, that would be even nicer. I just saw this. It has the faintest line I've ever seen in a wishing stone. But a wishing stone it is nonetheless. And there's these. I don't know what these are. Anybody can tell me what these are. They're very silvery. My guess is it's granite with a lot of quartz in it. They're very pretty. It's a heart sheep. A little silver heart. Yeah, it's sparkly. <laughs> Do you reckon that's quartz? Mm, maybe I don't know. I'm not a uh, not a quartz expert. <laughs> Could be uh, well, it's some sort of stone. If you know, let us know. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of looks like granite, but it's very silvery. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. I'm not sure if that's a tile. No, it's not. That's actually kind of cool. There's partial letter there. Looks like it was going to be a W. We'll take that. I'll show that to Nicole. It's really thick. Okay, there's something that I found before just as we were walking over here. So I'm going to give that to you just now. Okay. Now, I described it to you and I think you have a better idea of what it is than I do. Hmm. I think it might be from one of these huge uh, ginger beer uh, flagons that you get. I mean, you can see a partial letter, like a W, so that might indicate the brewery, possibly. It's a big jug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must have been really big and very thick. <laughs> yeah, for anyone not sure what flagon is, a flagon is a big jug. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. I'll show you what I found and rescued from the tides coming in. Yeah, there's not much down there by the water. No. Certainly the, the water's nice and calm, but yeah, I couldn't really see anything down there. But yeah. you found these wee pieces. Yeah, yeah, this one was right in the water. It's a, I'll turn it around and then you can... Look, it's a heart shape. It's a sea foam, <laughs> piece of white, and another one of these lovely pebbles. That's a bit of a stretch for a heart shape, but yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a longish heart, it's got a little heart shape. <laughs> it's a big long heart. <laughs> see a heart if you want to see a heart. Indeed. <laughs> So Nicole's just seen a piece of pottery. I'm going to grab a piece. So sorry if the camera ducks down, but I think that's a piece of pottery as well. Oh, oh, you're going to like this. Yeah, is yeah, there yeah. something in it? Yeah, oh, there is. Yeah, I'm going to pocket this for a second. <laughs> Actually, just a wee second. Right, so whilst Nicole's unearthing this piece that she's found there, I'm just going to give you a sneak preview. I want to see it. Nicole wants to see this, but I'm showing you it first. It's going to be a big surprise for Nicole. Well, that's really cool actually, that looks like an evil face. <laughs> okay, let's go see the piece that Nicole's just found. So you found a nice wee bit of pottery, or well, <laughs> do you think it's a nice wee bit of pottery? <laughs> I'm losing faith. You are? <laughs> well, it has a couple of letters on it which look really kind of old fashioned. Yeah. But it's not pottery as such, it's really rough. So yeah. I'm guessing it's maybe from a sanitary object. <laughs> yeah, well, it could be like um, one of these uh, basin things, you know, the big basins or a trough oh, or yeah. something like that. Like a Belfast yeah. sink. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's be positive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got an awkward shape. 
through it the back. It has, yeah. It's really <laughs> thick as well. Yeah. Yeah, but it's got a nice glaze on it there and a K yeah. and an E. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay, I'll show you what I found. I okay. think this is really quite nice. I'm going to hand it to you upside down. Okay. Oh, well, it's got a nice shape. It does. I'm going to turn around. Yeah, go for it. Oh, that is nice. It's very cool, isn't it? It's really nicely marked. Oh, it does have a face on it. I think it does. Okay, I'm going to take a close look at that just now. Wow. So that's very cool. I've never... Ah, uh, right, okay, I'm certainly no expert on pottery by a long, long stretch of things. But I've never seen a face like that. It looks evil. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I've never seen anything like it before either. My first thought was at first it would be like blue willow pottery, but that doesn't have an evil face on it. So yeah, yeah, that is amazing. Well, I mean, I don't think it's an evil face, but it's, there's <laughs> definitely a face there. It looks like it's yeah. grimacing. It's it's very interesting. I don't know if anybody recognises the pattern that might be from. Mm. And we will have a wee look and see what we can find out because we've got that really nice book that we were sent. Yeah. On blue pottery. So we'll have oh, a look yeah. in there and see if we can find that design. That's right. It might be in there because there's a, well, it's blue and white pottery. So yeah, it yeah. might be in there. Uh, yeah, it looks a bit, maybe it's like a, like a, a Greek god or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, th I thought at first, you know, Medusa or something like mm. that because it's got that kind of menacing look. Yeah. But that's very cool. That is indeed very cool. <laughs> I think that's today's... Uh, today's best today's find. Today's best find, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I need you to see. Let's go back to the car. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's get along with the car then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can find something to top this piece. Although yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to get down to the water's edge before the tide comes fully in. So when the tide's coming in just now, we've got quite some time to look in the uh, at the brake line or the tide brake line. Yeah. But we want to get down and just uh, have a wee look at the waves as they come ashore. He's standing up on top of that rock to avoid the incoming tide. <laughs> yeah, I'm on, on top of the mountain. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you'll manage to keep out of the water for very much longer. 
No, no, it's coming in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess we should take a wee bit of a walk back along, have a look in the tide line, mm -hmm. see what we can pick up in there. Yeah. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find another letter for our Smarties collection. <laughs> Who knows? That would be great. I think we've got about 12, 13, 14, something like that. So <laughs> Yeah. Another one would be great. Okay, well we've had a look at the waves. Let's get <laughs> up the beach, see what we can find. Yeah, let's go back there. So we're going to get across that little, uh, what we'll call that? We'll call that a wee beach lake. <laughs> <laughs> just for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. We're going to get across there and I don't know if you can see it from here, there's lots of little white lines along the, the beach there. Yeah. They're all full of shells. <laughs> That's where we're going. So here we are. In shell heaven. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to call them the shell mines. <laughs> but shell heaven, shell mines. Okay. I'm going to go have a look. Yeah, yeah, let's see what we can find in there. There's so many, just tiny little shells in this area. Lots and lots of them. So we'll collect a bunch of these. Oh, that's so tiny. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we'll see what else we can find. Yeah, there's a nice wee bit of uh, sea foam there. Mm -hmm. Really nicely kind of frosted as well. Oh, that's nice, yeah. It's not glass, but there's a really nice pebble here. Oh, yeah. That's a really lovely kind of pure, hardly a fleck in there. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of the Cape May diamonds that some people find in Cape May. Where's Cape May? Oh, it's in the States. Where, do, you, do you know where? I think it's on the East Coast. <laughs> okay. If you know where Cape May is, <laughs> let us know in the comments. Yeah, yeah. That's lovely though. It's yeah, really yeah. nice. We'll take that. Cool. That's really cool, because the first time that we came to this beach, I found this area that was, uh, there was tons and tons and tons of shells in it. And here, we're getting all these little shells, they're about the size of my fingernail there. Hmm, do you know what would be nice? If we collected a couple of these and we just filled up tiny little bottles with them. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, they're really lovely. <laughs> it's really nice for you here. Some bigger shells. We've got a wee birdie shell in there. <laughs> oh, I found one too. You find one as well? Yeah. Okay. Got some, uh, I don't know what kind of stone that is. It's very silvery. But there's some sea glass in here as well. We're primarily, at the moment at least, looking for these tiny wee shells. But I'm just going to pile a few things into this uh, this bigger shell and we'll see what we get. Tiny shells. Hmm. Alright, there's a wee gate to go in there. <laughs> the more you look, the more you find. Yeah. There's another birdie. We've got three birdies in here now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's a nice wee collection. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a nice wee start, yeah. Yeah. And what did you describe that as? Like a beach in a shell. Yeah. Just need a wee bit of sand in there. Oh, yeah. A wee bit of water. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's nice. jackpot of mini shells here. Yeah. There's loads of them here. And that nice wee bit of frosted glass beside you there as well. Oh yeah. So yeah. I'm just going to start flinging wee shells into your hand. 
<laughs> There's a wee shell. Another wee shell. Mm -hmm. That's actually a partial shell. And they're all the same kind. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Oh, look. Oh, there's another wee birdie, but it's one. got a lot of a, a lot of shell attached to the back of that one there. Another tiny one. All right, these are tiny. Yeah, they're really cute. It's the tiniest shell we can find. Here's another one. Oh, this is the tiniest one. <laughs> that is really wee. <laughs> Okay, looking good. It is. I reckon we're going to fill a wee jar. Yeah. Yeah, so more of the sea glass amongst the shells here. But so many shells. Really, I mean, just tiny, tiny wee shells. So many of them. They're lovely wee things. I just hope that we find enough to at least fill one wee bottle. I'm not going to bury this piece of sea glass entirely. I'm going to take it home with me. <laughs> for the time being though, I think these shells are just so nice. This one's lovely, so purple inside. Oh, there's another one of these uh, Cape May diamonds. Well, it's quartz from Scotland, but yeah, <laughs> it's very pretty. But it's very nice, isn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna pull this a wee bit closer. Yeah. So there's there's no flex in it. Normally we find this kind of quartz, and it's flecked with lines and stuff. Mm. But these ones are just really, really clear. Yeah. Really oh, lovely. Almost like an opaque piece of milk glass. Yeah. Do you know what that reminds me of? Yeah, that massive shell we found a few weeks ago. Yeah, now that was just up the coast from here as well. That was in Lower Largo. So interesting then we'd find this is, I think, the only second time I've seen so many holes in a piece of shell like this <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's quite a lot of holes in it. Yeah. Let's hold that up to the light and we'll see if it looks as nice as the other one. It's really small compared to the other <laughs> one though. It's really small. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this one's a lot smaller, it's going to trick it to get in front of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still managing to block out the sun. Almost. So a lot of the houses that we can see here in London Lynx were actually built as guest houses. On a day like today, it's easy to see why people flocked here for their summer holidays. London Lynx takes its name from the London family, who once occupied a large home on the northern edges of the town. The name itself derives from Lund, it's a Scandinavian name which means grove. As demand for tourist accommodation grew in nearby Lower Largo, this once quiet rural village began to resemble the place we see today. Guest houses were built, an 18-hole men's golf course was constructed between the accommodation and the beach. Mirroring this, a 9-hole women's golf club was constructed a short distance to the north. This is the oldest women's golf course in the world, and it's where we filmed those amazing Neolithic standing stones last year. These days, both courses are open to men and women. The beach here once buzzed with holidaymakers arriving from Edinburgh and Glasgow. The single platform train station stood just above the beach from 1857 until 1965, when like so many rural train stations in the UK, it closed on the recommendation of the Beaching Act. You can find out more about that in our video about Leaven's Lost Railway. These days, 
Tourism at Fife tends to be focused further east than this village. This means that the beach here is wonderfully quiet most of the time. Aside from a few dog walkers and folks taking an afternoon stroll by the sea, we have the luxury of having this beautiful place to ourselves. I've seen all these wee shells and they're lovely, but this is very unusual. Is, it, is that an agate? Oh. Or is that it's a, a crystalline structure? Very unusual, it's very pretty. It does look like an agate. It does, doesn't it? Mm, that is very pretty, yeah, with the layered. Very unusual effect. shape. Yeah, yeah. And Just look, pop that down inside look that. Look what I found. Okay, nice wee bit of, is that blue willow pattern? Well, it might be. <laughs> it might be, yeah, yeah. It's a really nice piece, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, it's a lovely wee piece of uh, ceramic though. Yeah. Nice wee piece of pottery, we'll have that. Mm -hmm. As I always say, perfect size for an earring or a little charm. Let's see if Nicole's having any luck up here. Mm. It's been a nice wee piece. A nice wee piece of pottery. quite rough around the edges on the print but it's very nice very clear and I think that's a piece I think that's a piece of transfer wear but I'll get Nicole to confirm that very soft sand up here soft sand. very soft sand <laughs> yeah. having any luck well this is the beach plastic area <laughs> ah yeah yeah the plastic always gathers up the top end of the beach yeah because it's light so it floats to the top basically um found quite a few bits of beach plastic okay. um well i found something that you might actually like <laughs> i do like beach plastic yeah beach plastic's <laughs> cool but is it as cool as that oh no it's not <laughs> is that transfer wear uh yeah it is i thought it was uh, uh -huh. the edges look a little bit indistinct yeah um but nonetheless it's uh it's a really nice clear design and i think that's one of the things that's really distinctive about transfer wear right yeah it's, yeah the patterns that are on them like that blue piece that we saw with the face just a little earlier that's transfer wear that is transfer wear yeah so if you see something and it basically it looks like it's printed then it's transfer wear because that's basically what it is but we'll go into more detail in two weeks time um and if you want to know more about sponge wear watch next week's video yeah and this is a really lovely piece uh, it looks like it's got a water lily on it or a lily rather right a print yeah it's really nice very mm -hmm. pretty yeah that's very pretty So, <laughs> divisive. Do you think that's nicer than the, the piece with the face on it? Mm, well, I think they're both very nice. Um, it's very diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have to say that the face piece is my favourite piece because I've not got another piece like that. Uh, but the flower piece is also very nice and it's kind of petite. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say that. But both transfer wear. Yeah. <laughs> Because since you can't wave, she's just found a nice piece of blue grass. Yeah. There we are, heading off the beach, and I found 
the biggest piece of blue sea glass and a little piece of pinna sea glass so we should have looked in this area all along okay so yeah I, i'm willing to bet that that wee blue bit is a bottleneck uh -huh. and that wee white bit there at the back looks like it is as well oh that one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i think it might be a, a bottle Hmm, I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like it has uh, some sort of internal crack in it. Oh, yeah. Um, and ah, then there's... Yeah, there's a pattern there. Yeah, yeah, you see it just very faint, tiny, tiny bit of the uh, Florentine uh, privacy sea glass pattern. And this is a really bright piece of uh, green, so that might actually be an old piece rather than one of the newer beer bottles we find. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe get that under uh, UV as well. That looks quite... Uh... There's yeah. a slight yellow tint to that green. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, we'll check that. Yeah, okay, things to do when we get home. <laughs> Just on the way back to the car, I found the other earring, so I think we can make a pair. <laughs> cool. So, it's time for that competition we told you about a couple of weeks ago. And all you have to do to enter is guess how many pieces are in this jar full of sea glass. Please leave your answer in the comments. The five closest guesses have the chance to win a ticket to talk to us on Zoom after next week's premiere. Please make sure you've got Zoom installed and that you are available from 7.30 on uh, until 8.30 UK time. Good luck! We've come back to the house and we've taken our dictionary of blue and white pottery to see if we can find where this little face might have come from. It's not uncommon for blue and white pottery to look to art for inspiration and many of the designs that are found on plates are more or less copies of very well known paintings. It's also common for blue and white pottery designs to feature motifs from Greek and Roman myths and classic stories. We found this image of a Greek inspired plate using blue and white pottery design. We think it's the closest that we can find to this design, but if you know any better or you can help us identify it, please let us know in the comments. You've asked us so many questions about smart lids that we thought we'd do a very short section just telling you how that you can date them. We're going to take a wee look at a photograph that Kyle sent us over from the west coast and we'll kind of try to give him a rough idea how old that Smarties lid is and whether or not it's a rare find. Believe it or not there are rare finds for Smarties. We're also going to take a wee catch up look and see how we're getting on with our Smarties lid project. We've made a start on our Smarties lid shadow frame project so we thought we'd bring you up to date on that. Nicole has marked out her alphabet and made a start fixing the letters that we already have into the spaces that she's made for them. We're using blue tack to attach the lids, but a PVA glue or something similar would do just as well and it will likely last a little longer. I think it looks really cool. It reminds me of some modern artworks like Damien Hurst's medical cabinets or the dot paintings that he's also known for. I think it's going to look great when it's finished. We've had so many questions and comments about Smarties that we thought we would say a few words about them. The first thing to say is, UK Smarties are not the same as the US candy by the same name. A Smartie is a small candy crisp coated piece of chocolate, a little similar to a chocolate M&M. They used to come in all sorts of colours, though these days food safety and concerns about additives and colourings has meant that some of the old colours are no longer used. If you've found a Smarties lid and you've wondered how old it is, there are ways to find out. It might just be me, but when I see plastic on the beach, I tend to think that it's only recently been dropped. Well, Smarties lids are an education in this respect. If you find one, you can be sure that it is at the very least 16 years old because Smarties stopped using a plastic lid back in 2005. A lid with a letter on it is at least 26 years old because the lids were all blank from 1995 onwards. 
but even a blank lid could be much older. A lid from the 1950s were also blank, and letters were not used until the 1960s. If you measure the lid, you can tell if it's old or new. Smarties began using the metric system in 1965. So if you find a lid that's smaller than 24 millimeters in diameter, then you know that it was made after 1965. The funny thing is, they all look like they were dropped just yesterday. There is so much more that we could say about this simple plastic object. Working out the age of a lid is only part of the story. It might surprise some of you, but these little environmental pollutants are collectible. We've seen listings on auction sites where you can buy a large consignment of these lids for around £100. It really boggles the mind.
We've got mermaid mail. Thanks so much, Karen, for sending this amazing book along. It's jam-packed full of colourful pictures and really interesting topics. We've touched upon several of these topics in our videos, like uranium glass and coloured glass. And there's also a small article in here on aerated water. And Craig's just finished writing an article for the Beachcomber magazine on aerated water. So I'm really looking forward to reading this book and uh, looking at all these great pictures. Thanks so much again, Karen. This is an amazing addition to our collection of sea glass books. And it's such a lovely card as well, totally inspired by sea glass. Thanks so much, Karen. Thank you so much for watching, liking and commenting on the videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Thanks also to everybody who's helped us out through Kofi and who's visited our Etsy shop. That really makes a huge difference to us. And for everybody who's uh, maybe bought us something through their Amazon wish list, that's really awesome. We're going to go back home and we're going to look at one of the books that you've bought us to see if we can identify that blue and white piece. Really makes a difference to us, it really helps us out. Thank you so much. Oh,